anything you do in life, you know, you've got to believe that you can do it. You've got to believe that you can actually make a difference. The colossus that would always rise to the challenge. Centre in Australia's team of the century, he was a juggernaut, a human wrecking ball, and one of the most formidable players in rugby league history. Yeah, look at this run from Meninga. He was strong, uh, he was tough, and he was very fast. Meninga, they can't stop me from there! Whether he was playing for club, state, or country, he was unstoppable. Here's a chance for Meninga. Oh, what power, what size! Damaging in defence. Oh, no! The big tackle coming in. But above all, he was an inspiration, a true leader of men. Getting out with him! They get out to Meninga! Out with him, Gatra! He gets the hole! What a try! Meninga! Come with the air, come with the man. Captain Mel Meninga scores one of the most famous tries in Test Match football! He's one of the greatest players that ever played the game. It's a measure of the man that in Canberra, Australia's capital city, the Malmeninga grandstand is guarded by his likeness in bronze. It's the type of honor afforded to very few of sports elite. But as is so often the case, greatness had humble beginnings. We weren't sort of rich in material worth, but certainly rich in, in family life. and. Um, you know, fond memories and mum and dad, you know, dad being black and mum being white in those times, it was more more taboo than anything else, you know, marriages and both families weren't uh, conducive to it, you know, so they were anti it. So going to school was a bit tough at times, you know, being sort of a half cast, I guess, in, in, in terms, in those terms, and uh, made things a bit difficult, but I had a great upbringing, um, fun, and uh, all re revolved around sport and rugby league in particular. Played it because I, I loved it. Um, and then I was lucky to meet a guy called Wayne Bennett, who sort of, I guess, seen something in me from a potential point of view. He taught me a lot of things um, about myself in particular. And he said to me, Al, you can do anything you like as long as you put your mind to it. And it had a profound influence on me. And from that time on, when I was 17, um, through setting goals, I set a goal, you know, I want to play, you know, for, for my country. Mal Meninga's first significant steps on the road towards achieving that dream were made in the Brisbane Rugby League. It was in this competition he formed a lifelong bond with fellow junior prodigy, Wally Lewis. One time, and Mal knows the story very well, <clears throat> I was playing here at Lang Park, as it was in the old days, and uh, he ran into me and he just hit me with a, a prime elbow, flush on the chin. <clears throat> and, and I reacted the wrong way. I got up and I said, you so-and-so. And Mel just, his eyes just opened up. I went, oh, no, what did I say that for? Oh. And the next time he got the ball, he caught it and he just looked, Where, where's Lewis? Oh, oh, there he is, out there. And he did a detour to run straight at me. And I thought, oh, here we go. Uh, he ended up going straight over the top or to the side of me and ended up scoring. And uh, on the way back, he came looking for me. And I said, oh, mate, listen, um, you know, about that comment. And uh, I said, you didn't have to hit me with the elbow. We were both at fault there, but um, you know, the more that we got to know each other over the years, uh, those insults certainly disappeared and were replaced by compliment. When you're playing against Mel, just leave him alone. If you're going to go out there, don't tease him, don't upset him, you know, don't bring race into it or anything like that. Just run out there and say, "Great, Mel, what's happening? A couple of pots after the game, mate. You know, a bit thirsty tonight. Uh, it'll it'll be good. Just don't upset him." Meninga and Lewis's friendship was forged playing in a competition perceived to be weaker than that in the larger city of Sydney. Brisbane was the poor relation. No one you know, considered it a, a tough competition, but it, it was a tough competition, but we never get recognised. You, know, you had to come down to Sydney to prove yourself, really. The exodus of Queensland talent to the New South Wales competition meant that representative fixtures between the two states were horribly lopsided. Many of Queensland's finest would be wearing the blue of New South Wales. One of the most unique things I remember about representative football in the late 70s here in Queensland was that uh, most of the, the players here probably thought you're unlucky to get picked in the Queensland side. You get picked in the Queensland side pre, prior to origin, um, 
you never really thought in the back of your mind you had a chance of winning. Mal and Wally were to become instrumental figures in changing that perception. On July the 8th, 1980, Mal's 20th birthday, the pair teamed up with a host of New South Wales-based Queenslanders who returned to represent their home state. State of Origin was born. And away they go. And when Origin come along, and then our players came back from New South Wales and played uh, in our side, um, that game was the catalyst for the self-belief that, you know, you put a maroon jersey on, you beat those dirty blues. Mal played his part in the first Origin. He kicked a record seven goals in the match which proved to be the difference between the sides. What those guys did in those early games was, was enormous. And, and if it hadn't happened that way, if they hadn't have been instantly successful, the state of origin wouldn't have developed as it has. During five golden years for Queensland, Mal Meninga and Wally Lewis became the cornerstones of the team. They came to embody state of origin and ensure the long-term success of the concept now one of the fiercest rivalries in world sport. It can't be understated how much the likes of Wally and Mal have done to, uh, you know, to make it that way. I loved playing inside the bloke because you knew that if, you, if, if I spotted a gap somewhere and I ran to be able to provide the ball somewhere, he was going to be running into that hole. I think they had uh, a number of players who they idolised um, and Mal was one of those. Um, and they knew that, um, you know, the, the tougher the game, the, the tougher that Mal would play. And if they were in trouble, they could look to Mal and he would do something very special to inspire them. Mal Meninga! Mal Meninga gets the try! Mal Meninga finished his career with the Queensland State of Origin team, having played a then record 32 times. He captained his state on nine occasions. He holds the current record for most points in Origin, at 161, and he was chosen in the Queensland Team of the Century. He played in the BRL for seven years, and during that time he featured in six grand finals. In the off-season in 1984-85, Mal accepted a contract with St Helens to play in the English Rugby League. He scored 28 tries in 31 games, becoming an instant favourite amongst the British fans. He said goodbye to the Saints with a league title, having gained a truly international profile. In 1986, he made the journey south to face the challenge of the Sydney competition, having signed with the Canberra Raiders. That was the biggest signing, and still to this day, the biggest signing the Raiders have ever made, and that was a catalyst for all of that success at the Canberra Raiders, and I think most people would be would say that with a lot of confidence, that that's exactly how it, how it played out. John Ferner was the coach. I didn't want to live in Sydney. Um, they are on the up, uh, I think, their first grade year before, just missed down the, or played off in the, for the final five. Um, I sought a lot of advice from Wayne Bennett as well, and um, yeah, I thought it was the right place for me to go. So um, I was very happy I did, to be honest with you. Mal's signature was used to lure young talent. His arrival was followed by New South Wales prodigy, Laurie Daly. I can remember just going to one of my first training sessions and as we're walking out, I bump into Mal. He sort of looks at me, I look at him, we shake hands. He nearly crushes my hand. He introduces himself as Mal Meninga. I feel like saying, I know who you are. <laughs> He tries to crush your hand. He's got a massive. He's got a massive hand, and he's a hard man. So you've got to be uh, prepared for that. It was like, don't feel the pain. Don't feel the pain. <laughs> I, I just remember Mel making me feel really welcome. Um, he's just got a. He's just got a great way about him um, as a, as a club person, not just as a, a team person. For me, uh, 